Well, good morning and thank you very much for joining us. I am Yori Folari. Our guest this morning is um, Ambassador Usman Sarki. He's the former Nigerian Deputy Permanent uh, Representative to the United Nations, New York. Uh, a fine morning to you, Ambassador. Thank you very much. Good morning, Mr. Folarin. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Well, um, Thank you. the news that uh, Nigeria has opened up uh, its borders with uh, Niger Republic, uh, not just that, it has also reinstated a number of, uh, it has, you know, taken away the ban, the no-fly zone, it has taken away, you know, a lot of our relations, it, it has restored electricity to Niger Republic. And uh, then, uh, you know, gratifyingly, uh, Niger Republic, we hear, uh, has also opened its side of uh, the borders. Um, this is very, very positive, is it not, uh, Ambassador Sarki? Well, yes, it is. Uh, thank you very much, first of all, for having me on your program. Um, you are quite right. This. Yes, hello, good morning. Yes, we can still hear you. We, we can hear you. No problem, sir. Good. No problem. We're yes. hearing you perfectly. Uh, okay, very good. Thank you. Yes, like you said quite rightly, these are very important developments pursuant to a decision of the ECOWAS uh, Council of Heads of States and Government and uh, the Assembly, I should say, of Heads of State and Government taken, I think, in their uh, February 24th, uh, you know, uh, meeting uh, following uh, which I think, you know, it was announced by ECOWAS that the group has decided to lift all substantive uh, sanctions against Niger uh, for reasons of humanitarian considerations mainly. And uh, subsequent to that, the Nigerian government, through the State House spokesperson, issued a statement confirming and reiterating the position of His Excellency President uh, Bolahmi Tinubu on the need to re-engage with Niger and to bring back those uh, three countries that have threatened to leave uh, ECOWAS back into the fold. So largely, it was humanitarian consideration that drove that measure, that policy, and as well also of uh, reaching out to them to show conciliation and understanding and to really draw them from the brink of uh, performing a very extreme you know, action that could be detrimental to their own citizens, first and foremost, and to the larger well-being of the economic community of West African states. So it was a very positive uh, uh, development, yes. And, um, well, as we know, as you said, uh, oh, this was at the instance of uh, uh, the um, head of, um, how does one put it now, um, the president of ECOWAS, our president, Bola uh, Ahmed Tinubu, it was his directive uh, that led to all of this. Now, it was also he himself that had, you know, been sounding the warning that we were, there were so many uh, options that were on the table and um, it seemed like an irreducible um, situation at the time. He said that there must be an absolute reversal and a reinstatement of um, President Bazoum uh, uh, in Niger, um, but in the event, all of that didn't uh, actually happen. Yet, we have still gone ahead, so it seems to me that there must have been a lot of diplomatic work uh, that was going on uh, behind the scenes. Uh, for instance, um, seven states that have borders with uh, Niger the governors have met with the president, even though the content of the meeting was not disclosed. But evidently, they would have been affected as well. Uh, but now we have a reversal from the position of an, in, uh, uh, an absolute intolerance for what happened in Niger um, to what does one call it now? Uh, are we just managing the situation, even though? President Bola Ahmed Tinubu has said that, well, as far as Nigeria is concerned, lift all restrictions. What does that really say? Well, uh, the facts are still there that initially led to the uh, taking of the decision to impose sanctions on Nigeria and isolate that country. 
which are the uh, ouster or toppling of a democratically elected uh, government in that country, truncation of the constitution and civil rule, and detention of the president, Mohammed Bazoum, illegally. These facts are still there, and uh, they have not changed. But what has changed is the perception on the part of ECOWAS and Nigeria in particular, perhaps because of historical, cultural, and other reasons, that uh, what we did earlier was to send a signal about intolerance, zero tolerance, towards their action. But at the same time, I think Nigeria, being what it is in the region, must show conciliation and also leadership in terms of maturity to guide the uh, other countries towards an efficacious solution that does not actually lead to the ending of the structure of ECOWAS as it has been established over 50 years ago. We looked at the bigger picture in, uh, in terms of the relationship with Niger, in terms of the historical relationship, and also the larger aspects of the survival of ECOWAS. If these three countries withdraw, what would be the consequences? What would be the effects on the regional grouping and the long-term mm -hmm. viability of ECOWAS and our countries? So we thought that you know, taking some actions to extend the hand of conciliation would not be out of place. After all, the entire engagement since August last year with Niger is based on actually finding a common ground to come to an understanding on the actions of the military junta in that country to ameliorate or mitigate what they have done to obtain a release of the detained president and his close associates and families and possibly to really take that country back along the constitutional and democratic paths. So the reversal of the decision is not a sign of weakness as such, but actually a sign of uh, a strategic thinking in terms of the larger interests of ECOWAS, the survivability of ECOWAS and its viability and continuity. You will remember that the three countries, uh, Mali, Burkina Faso, and uh, um, Niger went ahead to create what they call the ETAR dos, uh, uh, the uh, Association d'Etat Sahelien, that is AES, that is the Association of Sahelian States, uh, in the Loptaki Guruma Declaration, which the uh, three countries uh, created, you know, um, I think, you know, um, last year in September. Now that is actually a measure to discharge themselves from ECOWAS and create a regional and a subgrouping of these three countries, which will effectively mean their removal from ECOWAS. And we don't want to see that happening. So the measure taken by ECOWAS, and particularly <laughs> announced by the presidency in Abuja, is actually a way of safeguarding the integrity of ECOWAS in the long run, and also uh, based on the humanitarian considerations, as the ECOWAS president announced, Mr. Toure announced, you know, especially in the wake of the commencement of the Ramadan uh, fasting period, to ease the suffering of this uh, population and also bring about amelioration to the situation. So it is not, uh, as people say, a sign of weakness or retreat you know, by ECOWAS, but really a strategic thinking to safeguard the larger interests of the regional grouping, which our leaders, like General Yakubo Gawan, who is alive, have striven so hard to establish, and whose legacy we don't want to destroy, especially in this democratic government of President uh, Bola Hamid Tinobu. Okay, then. Thank you, uh, Ambassador. Uh, 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 we, our other guest um, is Umar Aminu Kalgo. Um, he's a lawyer and is secretary of the Nigerian Bar Association, Brunin Kebi uh, branch. He joins us uh, remotely via Zoom. A fine morning to you, Mr. Kalgo. Good morning. My pleasure to be on this show. Thank you very much for making time uh, for us. Uh, well, uh, we were, you, you must have heard the other guest. You must have heard Ambassador Usman Sarki. Uh, that's uh, Nigeria's uh, former Nigeria's Deputy Permanent Secretary, former Nigerian Deputy Permanent Secretary to the United Nations in New York, um, you know, speaking there. And um, he was, he's just been saying that 
Well, far from it being a sign of weakness, it was really a matter of rapprochement. Um, the, 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 the statements had been erected at the time, but the ambassador has been explaining that, well, uh, you know, things are never really uh, cast in stone like that, and uh, following further rapprochements, this has been decided. But from the point of view of um, the law and precedents going forward, are there anything, are there any striking things to note from this? Um, by and large, the uh, ECOWAS grouping is uh, an economic grouping, and it is regulated by a treaty which was uh, uh, first uh, signed by the member countries, 15 member countries, uh, in 1975. And uh, this treaty was reviewed in uh, 1993. So the issue of, um, by and large, the principles that uh, brought these countries together uh, for economical uh, achievements and what have you. All the same, the issue of uh, democratic principles also have come to play within the community because there was a declaration, ECOWAS Declaration on Democratic Principles in 1991, where they encouraged that uh, member states should upheld the democratic system of government as much as they could in their own internal governments. And equally, the revised uh, uh, charter of 1993 by, section, by Article 4, it also emphasized on the principles of uh, uh, democratic uh, demo democracy, where it also lead, it also leverage on the earlier declaration of uh, 1991, that is the ECOWAS Declaration on, Democra on, on Democratic Principles. So by and large, this is the nexus that this group has concerning the issue of uh, uh, our democracy. Uh, may, I want to get the declaration correct. The declaration is Equals Declaration on Political Principles. Yes, so this is by law, the regulating, the, the utmost regulating law concerning the system, and it has to say towards democracy. Okay, all right then. Um, uh, Ambassador, coming back to you, you've explained the background to. Uh, the change of stance uh, by uh, ECHO, as uh, speaking to uh, the ambassador now, Ambassador Usman Sarki. Um, uh, uh, related to that question of um, precedent, and you had explained that it was not a matter of uh, a weak weakness or a weakened position, so to speak. Um, I'm just looking at it that, look, going forward, uh, w do you expect that this could have an impact? We've heard the laudable reasons behind this change of stance, uh, but very substantive matters are still outstanding. I think the most important of this is uh, the president-elect, Barzoum, uh, that is still, if I'm right, uh, in uh, house arrest. And um, that was one of the key demands uh, of ECOWAS that, well, apart from the matter of that, uh, democracy must be reinstated. Also, President Bazoum must be uh, released. That has not happened. We have pulled back, that is to say, echo as I said, okay, okay, in, 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 in recognition of all those things you explained, Ambassador, uh, we, we will pu pull back a bit, but uh, they haven't given up anything so far, uh, if I understand it correctly. Well, uh, so far, we haven't seen uh, a reaction from the authorities, the uh, military regime in Niger, in Yani, responding uh, Apart from uh, opening of the borders from their own side, they have done that in yeah. reaction to our opening our borders. Yes, they did that a few days after ours, uh, which I think they welcome as being a, a big relief you know, to the economy, to their people and to their country. Uh, but other measures that uh, we hoped they will actually address, including the release uh, from detention, from house arrest of uh, former president, uh, the democratically elected president, Mohamed Bazoum, has not happened. 
And I believe negotiations, discussions are going on behind the scene to obtain uh, that outcome. It is not something that is very easy or very easily done. You know, there are lots of uh, consequences and ramifications in achieving such an outcome. Discussions must be very mature, must be very level-headed, must be very calm, and they should not be hurried in terms of uh, appeasing one section or trying to show to the world that we have obtained something. The idea, the issue of uh, diplomacy is a very grinding, you know, sometimes you know, very difficult in you know, uphill task. But with patience and perseverance, the objectives will be achieved. And I think the step, the correct, appropriate, and the right step has been taken by ECOWAS and Nigeria in lifting the sanctions against Niger. It is now for the regime in Niger to reciprocate that gesture by showing goodwill and discussing and letting Nigeria and ECOWAS know their readiness to release President Bazoum and also uh, to embark on returning the country to constitutional rule. I remember in the, uh, the earlier days of the coup, they, we insisted that within six or eight months they should return the country uh, to democratic rule, and they said no, that would not be possible. They could do so maybe after three years. So we'll see how the negotiations will go. These are confidential discussions, and they are held at very high level, at the level of ministers and envoys and, of course, heads of state and government. So we should not preempt them in terms of the outcome, although it will be very important for, for us to know uh, what ultimately will ensue from those discussions. But I believe you know, our Minister of Foreign Affairs, uh, Ambassador Yusuf Maitamatugar, is speaking with his counterparts in ECOWAS, and so uh, our National Security Advisor, our Director of the National Intelligence Agency and others are conversing with their counterparts to find ways to actually you know, resolve this standoff and bring back the airing of different parties closer together in terms of achieving the objectives that we all want. That is to see uh, you know, calm returning to our region, particularly towards the fighting of terrorism, insurgency, banditry, and other negative uh, forces in our region. Uh, you remember, you, or you should remember, that despite the military's claim that they came in order to restore peace and security in their countries, the situation in Mali, Burkina Faso, and Niger actually deteriorated further by about 60 to 71 percent in terms of armed attacks and insurgency and the claiming of territory by uh, these insurgent and uh, terrorist forces. So the, their situation has not actually ameliorated or improved. On the contrary, they got worse. And uh, the impact of what is happening in those countries cumulatively is being felt in Nigeria in terms of access by terrorists and bandits into our country. So it is in our interest to downplay propaganda, especially on the side of Niger, against Nigeria in ECOWAS, and for them to see things clearly and maturely from the, in the eyes, from the eyes of interest and the security of the region. Uh, it is also important that Niger, Niger does not impose conditions on its cooperation with the uh, Lake Chad Basin uh, Multinational uh, Joint Task Force, which is a military uh, establishment to fight terrorism across the borders of the four countries, namely uh, Niger, Chad, Cameroon, and Nigeria. We should be open-minded and positively disposed to action you know, in, the, in, in that uh, multinational task force in order to achieve our overall aims. So the idea of uh, having an incremental result will happen as negotiations continue and you remember that we are not the only interested parties. There are other outside uh, parties involved in the discussion to see that uh, matters do not deteriorate beyond where they are today. Uh, the, the European Union is discussing with member states, across member states, and through back channels with Niger. Uh, other countries, like the Gulf uh, Arab countries, are also discussing with them. Uh, prospectively, I hope, and the African Union is also engaged in the discussions, you know, to release President Bazoum and also obtain a commitment from the military regime in Niamey 
to restore democracy uh, to that country. So all hope is not lost. Indeed, there is hope that things will get better with the lifting of sanctions uh, by Nigeria and of course against Niger so that we will establish a stabilized condition for relationship devoid of suspicion, acrimony, propaganda and other negative traits. Okay. And um, yeah, thank you, Ambassador. And, um, you know, uh, Mr. Umar Aminu Al-Kalgo, uh, it might not be generally known that geographically, Niger is actually uh, larger than Nigeria. Uh, but, you know, the population is another matter uh, because Niger has up, up to 80% of its territory uh, covered by the Sahara Desert. And um, the population is just about a tenth something like 20.6 million uh, uh, compared to the figures that we are citing often as anywhere between 200 and 220 million. So uh, it, it is constantly seen as a very poor country at the very, very bottom of the United Nations Humanitarian uh, Index. And so it's, it's going to be mutually beneficial, I think, but in particular for Niger, that there's this reopening of borders, and um, the ambassador was just speaking about security with 80% of its space, of its territory, you know, you know, swallowed up by the Sahara Desert. All sorts of, all sorts of you know, incursions uh, could be coming from there. So I see that that probably also contributed uh, to the decision uh, that we have here. But there's also this interesting, uh, this interesting fact that but for how Africa was partitioned up and between the British and the French, it was really one land uh, uh, mass until, you know, demarcations came. And then that is why up to seven states border, up to seven Nigerian states border Niger. And the heads of those states, as I said earlier, actually met with the president at one time. Uh, to say that um, we just need to explore every last diplomatic uh, option possible uh, to resolve this situation. Uh, the matter of going to war at the time, it's, done, it's now all old hat. The, the matter of sending Nigerian troops into Niger, uh, it, it was, uh, the people couldn't see how that would benefit anybody, if not even further impoverish both Nigerian sides, especially in the north, and they themselves. So. Uh, I guess the question I'm asking now is that um, it's also in, it's very, very much in Niger's interest that we become friendly again, uh, taking cognizant of, of uh, the index that I spoke about, where they are seen as very, very poor. And um, we have, uh, we've been doing our, our level best to see if we can ameliorate that situation. Is that a question to me? Uh, yes, sir. I'm with you, uh, Umar Aminu Kalgo. Okay. Well, um, the, it is indeed in the best interest of Niger and Nigeria as well, and the other countries which uh, have threatened to, I mean, discontinue their membership from uh, this country is for one are land, landlocked landlocked countries and uh, you know the landlocked countries have issues because much of the trade and uh, also the supplies that uh, are needed for everyday life by and large by seaways so even under the treaty that is a, a particular article that talk about how uh, the landlocked countries should be helped in order to uh, to find to facilitate the income of import and export through the countries that have maritime borders. So what I would say is uh, in international relations, uh, one cannot downplay uh, the issue of uh, cooperation politically and economically. More so regarding that this is a community that is geared towards uh, advancing economic integration. Uh, it even envisaged a time when the ECOWAS would have a single currency and also a, cent a single central bank 
to regulate the economic activities of the region. So it is indeed, uh, 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 this lifting of sanction is a, a welcome uh, 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 idea and uh, it will relieve difficulty both in citizens in Niger and also some of the communities that are borderline communities in Nigeria as well. Mm -hmm. But really, the toll that was taken on the Nigerians is, uh, is, uh, is something that we can only imagine because look at it, the utility, an essential utility, which is equated to fundamental right, electricity. The main source of electricity is from Nigeria, and it was severed all this while. They don't have that electricity. So this is, uh, you know, we have to welcome this uh, where we find ourselves today, because even the issue of, 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 of sanction is controversial in law. When you look at the treaty that established a course, Article 77 of that, it talks about sanctions, but not in the way we saw them. Sanctions are mentioned in that article to apply where a member state has fell on, on its obligation. What are these obligations? It's another question. But really, the obligations that are literal, clear from that, are the membership contributions and levies and what have you. But the issue of uh, political principles, which talks about a uh, uh, democratic system of government under Article 4, are just fundamental principles, where mostly these are ideal and objectives. So I would say it's a comfortable place that we find ourselves here today, as the ambassador has uh, rightly uh, guided us to understand that in uh, political, international politics, and even politics most of the time, it is uh, expediency that uh, called the day. And I think this scenario is the best we can have moving forward, especially with the issue of security, as you pointed out, because the, these insurgents already are taking advantage of our border lines because of issue of jurisdiction. That's why we are having these joint tax forces. And when we have situations where there is uh, these uh, sanctions, then it is something uh, uh, the cooperation that is needed will not be there. Okay. So I would say uh, it's a conflict. All right, then. Um, well, thank you very much. Um,